Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Rose Jacobs live from Calkine Studio and you're watching The Early Trades. Let's get started with our market open report. The Australian share market has edged lower in the opening minutes of trade with the benchmark index down 0.3%. Shares in Pinnacle dropped 8.3% following its announcement on Tuesday that it will buy a 25% stake in 5V Capital. Harvey Norman was down 3.9% after saying its sales were down down on last year's numbers. BAPCOR extended its fall, dropping 5%, while Technology One opened 7.2% lower. PointsBet leads the market, rising 3.5% after receiving an online wagering license in Virginia. Energy stocks are also performing strongly, led by Woodside Petroleum, advancing 2.2%. Big news coming in from the Australian Securities Exchange. The ASX is being forced to spend millions of dollars, making its trading systems more robust and faces pressure to make it easier for brokers to use rival platforms in future outages and more scrutiny from the corporate regulator. The Australian Securities and Investments Commission will continue to investigate whether the ASX has satisfied its licence obligations to operate a fair, orderly and transparent equity market after a report by IBM into last November's trading outage found nearly one in four ASX capabilities fall short of global best practice. Coming back to the market updates, futures trade suggested a flat start. The prospects for the nation's two most significant sectors, financials and materials, have improved significantly this week. The S&P ASX 200 jumped 0.78% yesterday to its highest finish in a week as both the mining and banking sectors fired up. U.S. financials were the night's second best performer after energy, rising 1.55%. The Australian sector crawled off a 16-week low yesterday and should have more in it today as Australian yields follow U.S. yields higher. Iron ore extended its rebound from 18-month lows on bets that stronger-than-expected steel output cuts this year in China means steel mills are set to lift volumes next month. The price of the commodity traded in the spot market climbed 4.4%. China's benchmark iron ore futures surged on Tuesday, hitting their 10% daily trading limit in morning sessions. Futures in Singapore leapt more than 10% to trade above US $100 during the session. This led to more gains for iron ore miners on Wall Street overnight, with BHP up 2.5% and Rio Tinto 3% higher near 3.10pm in New York. The dollar is also heading in the right direction for Australia's export-driven economy. The Aussie traded as low as 72.05 US cents overnight and was recently at 72.26 US cents. Trading volumes will likely fall away over the next few sessions as US participants head home for Thanksgiving. Tonight is the last full US trading session of the week. The NYSE and NASDAQ close on Thursday and only reopen for a half session on Friday. The last full week of AGM season delivers meetings today for shareholders in Harvey Norman, Ramsey Healthcare Hills, Ridley Shopping Centres Australasia, Lion Town Resources, Rhythm Biosciences and Integrated Research. Looking at important announcements, quarterly construction data, a key input to next week's GDP report, released at 11.30 a.m. RBA Assistant Governor Michelle Bullock is due to take part in an online discussion about digital currencies and IPOs. EBR Systems lists began today at 11.30 a.m. The company is at the trial stage with medical devices for treating patients with heart failure. And now before we move to the newsmakers, let's take a very small break. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Calkind's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Calkind TV.
Welcome back. Rose Jacobs with you this morning. Let's look at the ASX listed companies that are trending today. Miso Blast recorded a loss of US $22.84 million for the September quarter from US $24.06 million in the same period a year ago. The board and management believe the company can sustain the next 12 months of operations. Beyond that, Miso Blast still has US $40 million of finance available to it, contingent upon reaching certain hurdles or strategic deals. PointsBet has been awarded a temporary supplier license by the Virginia Lottery to offer online sports wagering in Virginia. The license was awarded to PointsBet subsidiary PointsBet Virginia through a partnership agreement with Colonial Downs and a subsequent joint application for licensure. Harvey Norman's aggregated sales revenue for the period July 1 to November 21 dropped 8.8% compared to the same time last year. The company reported that aggregate sales have increased by 16.9% compared to the same period two years ago. A1 Lithium, a subsidiary of Anson Resources, has awarded Worley an agreement to conduct a detailed feasibility study on their Paradox Lithium Bromine project in Moab, Utah, USA. Worley will provide engineering services to execute a detailed feasibility study for a greenfield lithium development under the agreement. Pinnacle Investment Management has successfully completed its $105 million institutional placement. As previously announced, the Pinnacle Director sold down 875,000 shares at the placement price of $16.70 per share, worth around $14.6 million. Pinnacle said the placement and sell-down were completed with strong support from institutional investors, including both existing and new shareholders. As announced on Tuesday, the proceeds from the placement will fund Pinnacle's investment in 5V Capital. Well, that's all for now on the early morning trades, but stay tuned to Calkine TV as we have many more shows lined up for you, sharing live updates across the economy, markets and sectors. I'm Rose, Rose Jacobs, signing off.